glass of water, please. Wait, what? No, something's wrong, something's missing. Is it a double entendre? No. Is it a cool gadget? No, that ain't it. Vodka martini, shaken, not stirred. Yes, it's martini, the sexy sophistication in a glass. The beautiful cocktail that made Hemingway feel civilized before he violently wrestled a bowl and set a piano on fire, I imagine. Hi, I'm Krista Curry, and this is a brief history of the martini. Before we learn how wrong James Bond was, what martini has to do with Rodney Dangerfield peeing, and how to make a mean martini yourself, subscribe to our channel and hit that bell button so you never miss another boozed up video. Now, as is usually the case with cocktails, nobody really knows who invented the martini. No, it wasn't the famous Italian vermouth maker, but they did advertise with the slogan, it's not a martini unless you use martini. It is said martini evolved from a cocktail called Martinez, which in turn evolved from the Manhattan. What we do know for certain is that a cocktail called martini first appeared in Harry Johnson's bartender manual in 1888 but it took a New Yorker to make the blockbuster we know and love today. The myth goes that John D. Rockefeller visited the Knickerbocker Hotel in 1912, where the bartender offered him something new. Equal portions gin and dry vermouth, plus a dash of orange bitters. The oil baron loved it, and the new cocktail soon became a huge success all across America, especially with the cool cats and flappers of the 1920s. Then the prohibition came and the only gin available was bathtub gin, which you can imagine didn't taste that good. But people still wanted their martinis, so bartenders poured more vermouth in, making the ratio 50-50. That's what we now call extra wet, or a perfect martini. By the 50s and 60s, martini became the go-to cocktail of cosmopolitan businessmen and executives. They were known to take long three martini lunches, which makes me wonder just how hard being a CEO is. Martini became a symbol of class and refinement, and it enchanted big names like Frank Sinatra, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and Francis Scott Fitzgerald. So basically, anyone whose name was Frank. Anyway, the legendary Rodney Dangerfield drank so many martinis, he said his urine sample had an olive in it. Always the one to keep it classy, Rodney. You have to be a bit well-read when it comes to cocktails because the fine art of mixology insists on throwing fancy words around. Like, what the hell is a dash? It's one-fifth of a teaspoon. Don't worry, you can just wing it. With martinis, there are a couple of concepts you should know. First, let's go back to the dashing double-O who famously ordered his martini shaken, not stirred. Well, guess what? Literally every bartender will tell you that shaking dilutes a martini while stirring makes it smooth. See, every cocktail that's booze forward should be stirred to create a smooth mouthfeel and the perfect dilution. So the murderous philanderer here should really say stirred, not shaken, because I'm not a savage. I guess people will believe anything a man with a tie says. But what's the deal with dry martinis? They all seem wet to me. The drier the martini, the smaller the amount of vermouth. As I said, the Prohibition martini was one to one, but the ratio changed through the decades. In the 1930s, it was three to one in gin's favor, while the 40s wanted four times more gin than vermouth. Making a good martini isn't so much about the recipe, since it all comes down to your taste, but about making sure all the details are taken care of. What you really need is gin and vermouth. The brands don't really matter, as long as the gin is top shelf and the vermouth is fresh. The ratio is also entirely up to you, so try different versions to decide on which one's your favorite. The most crucial part, however, is temperature. It's often called the fourth ingredient, and it will make or break your martini. Keeping your gin and vermouth in the fridge is smart, but most importantly, keep your glass ice cold so the drink stays cold longer. The easiest trick? Stir your glass in the freezer. Now, the recipe. Take your mixing glass filled with ice and combine gin and vermouth. Stir for 30 seconds and strain the mix into your chilled martini glass. If you're feeling wild, add a dash of Angostura bitters, garnish with a lemon twist, and voila! You now have what H.L. Mencken called the only American invention as perfect as the sonnet. That's all, folks. It doesn't matter where you are, having a glass of martini will always make you look and feel chic. What kind of martini do you prefer? Dry, wet, shaken, stirred? Tell us in the comments below. Bye!